Hello everyone, in this video I will be looking at the poem The Slave's Dream written by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Longfellow was an American poet who holds an important place in the literature of America. He was also a traveler, a linguist and a romantic who was well versed with the traditions of European literature and thought. He was equally learned in American history and literature. So that's something, uh, a brief insight about the poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. He the Slave's Dream talks about the, the struggle and the, the real picture of um, how a slaves undergo this pain and struggle which is you know worse than an animal um, at the moment there is this uh, black lives matter campaign and all this stuff so this racism is still prevalent even today back in the past there was this um, trade of slavery and this Africans were treated as uh, worse than animals. They were just captured and they were sold off or auctioned off. So, um, tracing back to the past and looking at the present, this um, racism is still not over yet. And with that, this whole campaign of Black Lives Matter and stuff like that is still going on um, the main theme in the poem is um, the nature of freedom and also how uh, the true picture of uh, slavery so this is evident in the way the slave is free while dreaming but when he is actually awake so um, the poem describes the dream of a slave who longs for his native land and for freedom so um, as the poem opens it starts with the, the picture of a slave who is um, lying beside the ungathered rice too weak to continue with his works the poem is mostly focused on this uh, idealized picture of a freedom so um, the first stanza beside the ungathered rice he lay his sickle in his hand his breast was bare his matted hair was buried in the sand again in the mist and shadow of sleep he saw his native land wide through the landscape of his dreams the lordly niger flowed Beneath the palm trees on the plain, once more a king he strode, and heard the tinkling caravans descend the mountain road. He saw once more his dark-eyed queen among her children stand. They clasped his neck, they kissed his cheeks, they held him by the hand. A tear burst from the sleeper's lids and fell into the sand. And then at furious speed he rode along the Niger's bank. His bridal reins were golden chains and with a martial clank. At its lip he could feel his scabbard of steel smiting his talon's flank. Before him, like a blood red flag, the bright flamingos flew. From morn till night he followed their flight, over plains where the tamarind grew, till he saw the roofs of Kaffir huts, and the ocean rose to view. At night he heard the lion roar, and the hyena scream, and the river hoarse, as he crossed the ridge beside some hidden stream, and it passed like a glorious roll of drums through the triumph of his dream. The forest with their myriad tongues shouted of liberty, and the blast of the desert cried aloud 
with a voice so wild and free that he started in his sleep and smiled at their tempestuous glee. He did not feel the driver's weep, nor the burning heat of day, for there that illumined the land of sleep, and his lifeless body lay a worn-out fetter that the soul had broken and thrown away. Right from the outset of the poem, we are given a picture of the slave who is lying beside the ungathered rice. His sickle is in his hand. His breast is laid bare, means without his, um, without his shirt. So you can imagine uh, a hot day with not even a shirt. His hair was buried in the sand. Again, in the mist and shadow of sleep, he saw his native land. So, um, we are given this uh, picture of the slave who is too weak to carry on with his work. That uh, he's lying down beside the ungathered rice, and in the midst of his dream, he is taken back to his uh, native land. So, through the landscape of his dreams. Um, we are given this picture of this this river which is um, flowing beneath the palm trees and um, once more he is a king um, back like in the past when he was a king in his dream he is uh, shown as a king again and he could hear the tinkling caravans which um, descends the mountain top. Um, the physical image of the, the slave is portrayed in the first stanza of the poem, right from its outset. He is too weak from all the works he has to do on the field and now he is asleep. This last dreaming takes us back to his life where he was once um, a king. The phrase ungathered rice and also uh, the phrase sickle in his hand indicate that his assigned work is left incomplete. It's not over yet um, but he is too weak to continue. Um, why through the landscape of his dreams the lordly Niger flowed? Beneath the palm trees on the plain, once more a king he strode and heard the tingling caravans descend the mountain top. So here, if we look at the second stanza onwards, his dream is described in a, in a clear picture by uh, the poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. We come to know from the phrase Lordly Niger that his native land was Africa. So once more a king, so he is now a king, which makes us guess that perhaps he was a king of a tribe in his land. In his sleep, he once again relives, he is reliving the days of his freedom and he, 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 could almost, he could almost feel or hear the tinkling caravans descending the mountain road. He wants so he saw once more his dark-eyed queen among her children stand. They clasped his neck, they kissed her cheeks, they held him by the neck. A tear burst from the sleeper's lids and fell into the sand. So if we look at the third stanza, the third stanza introduces us to his family. So he has his uh, dark-eyed queen and his children. Uh, his queen is described as quote unquote dark eyed queen and his children. He dreams of how um, they will clasp his neck, kiss his cheeks, and hold him by his hand. So there is this so much intensity in his dream, like which is so real that he cries in his sleep and this drop of tears fell on the sand 
and is absorbed by the sand. And then at furious speed he rode along the Niger's bank. His bridle reins were golden chains and with a martial clang at its lip he could feel his scabbard of steel smiting a stallion's flank. If we look at the fourth stanza, we are able to understand his life. We are able to see the real picture of his life as a free man. So we can see him riding a horse at full speed with golden chains. The bridle reins is golden chains and warrior like he smites his sword on a stallion's flanks so before him a blood red flag the bright flamingos flew from morn till night he followed their flight over plains where the tamarind grew till he saw the roofs of kafir hut and the ocean rose to view so um, the fifth stanza is uh, more or less a continuation of the fourth stanza, as he, you know, as he's able to see himself following the flight of flamingos, uh, which is over the plains where the the tamarind was grown. He recalls the kafir huts and the ocean through his subconsciousness, through his dream, basically. At night he heard the lion roar and the hyena scream and the river horse as he crossed the ridge beside some hidden stream and it passed like a glorious roll of drums through the triumph of his dream. In Then in the sixth stanza he dreams sequentially of the lion's roar, first the lion's roar and next the hyena scream and pictures himself crossing ridges, listening to the river horse making a sound which is kind of like a glorious roll of drums as it passes. His dream is triumphant as it successfully gives him a sense of freedom and happiness. And the blast of the desert cried aloud with a voice so wild and free that he started in his sleep and smiled at their tempestuous glee. In the seventh stanza, we are once again um, given this uh, picture of the forest, how the forest of his mind with their myriad tongues shout out desire of his soul, which is uh, liberty or, or freedom. The cry of the turbulent blast of the desert echoes through his being, making him start with a smile in his sleep. So, these uh, various sounds made by um, nature, which is so good that he is able to smile in his sleep. He did not feel the driver's whip, nor the burning heat of day, for that had ill mind the land of sleep. And his lifeless body lay a worn out fetter that the soul had broken and thrown away. In the eighth stanza, the poet returns to the physical condition of the slave who now lies numb and senseless in his dead. So he's, he is dead, he is no more alive. The driver is whipping him, but he is dead. So through his death, his soul had broken the fetters of his body and attained freedom. Throughout the poem, the poet uses graphic images that is uh, visual, auditory and tactile, efficiently describing the slave's native land and sort of creating an atmosphere of pathos. It means a deep sense of pity, which is full of, of impact. The slave is liberated from the tyranny of slavedom symbolically in his dream and finally by death. So he's able to achieve his freedom, achieve his liberty, but at the cost of his li uh, life. The poet is not um, 
too idealistic in sense that he wants his poem to be realistic and the slave is in no way possible to achieve freedom without him being dead so the slave is dead and he is able to achieve his freedom but sadly only at the cost of his life though not free in real life his last sleep and the visions of freedom that are conjured show that on the level of consciousness at least he has achieved his um, um, freedom so looking back at it again briefly an african slave is the protagonist in this poem and the slave is described to be in a very pathetic condition in the poem he is shown lying beside the ungathered rice with a sickle in his hand his chest was uncovered his thick hair was messed up and matted with the sand so uh, if we were to look back at his life yes the slave once had a good life when he lived in his homeland with his wife and children uh, he was the king of his native land where the river niger flowed very majestically um, at last when life held no hope of release death relented and gave his soul the desired freedom that broke the shackles of his body and released him from all pain it put an end to his slavery and the slave is free now so uh, if we look at the key theme the theme of the poem is the final dream of a black slave before his death basically freedom it is said on a plantation in america where he has stopped working in the middle of work giving up all his hope of freedom so the poem also describes the dreams of a victim of slavery during the 19th century all his dreams reflect the desires of his walking life so he longs for freedom he wants to be free we should also be uh, very much aware that the poem is an anti-slavery poem from the first stanza the poet helps to raise the awareness of the immoral injustices that the black people had to face it reflects the mood of the era the poet is trying to change the public opinion if we look at it more again the poem shows that black people had honorable lives before they were enslaved by the white race being untamable the slave is like a natural force the force with the myriad tongues this is a personification bringing the forest to life this comparison shows that the forest are free to express their freedom but the slave has no freedom till he dies his soul becomes free